What's up, folks? Here is a post commentary for my gunboat diplomacy game as Italy. Gunboat, by the way, means that the players cannot talk to each other. This game was played between June and August of 2021. In this game, I think, are some examples of some quite interesting tactical moves. There's some changing of sides, some crazy luck, too, so I hope you all enjoy. Uh, first thing I'll talk about, um, my thoughts on playing Italy. Italy is often considered the weakest nation. Uh, this is largely because it has guaranteed access to only one neutral center, Tunis, down here. And a fifth center after that can be very difficult to get your hands on. Options Trieste, Greece, Marseille, Spain, all very closed off. Um, it does have some strengths, though. Tactically, Italy has a very good defensive position. Uh, from land, Italy has the choke points of Piedmont and Venice, which generally require naval support from Gulf of Lyon or Adriatic to break against a well-dug-in Italy. And from sea, uh, the Tyranian Sea and Ionian Sea are both critical choke points blocking attacks from Turkey and France. Strategically, Italy has an advantage in being the immediate concern of none of its three neighbors, France, Austria, and Turkey. They all have bigger fish to fry. France has Britain and Germany, Austria has Russia and Turkey, and Turkey has Austria and Russia. Uh, because of this, Italy usually has the advantage of being able to pick and choose where it devotes its efforts. In a press game where you can talk to other people, uh, it really has to utilize this. Um, Italy really wants to be driving the aligned structures to create opportunities for itself. Um, for example, this could be wanting to form like a general friendship between Britain, Germany, Austria, and yourself getting Britain and Germany friendly, so that weakens France, um, potentially maybe having Russia and Turkey hostile to each other, if you could engineer that, that's good for you, as it lets you um, feel safer in going after Austria, potentially, without having to fear about walking into the teeth of Russia-Turkey alliance, which is a very common thing. Um, Unfortunately, this isn't a press game, so I can't drive the actions of my neighbors by talking to them, but here in this game you will see me exploit the opportunities as they present themselves, um, as well as knowing when to step back and reset when things aren't necessarily going as I would like them to. Uh, so with that being said, let's look at the first moves of the game in Spring 01. So I try Venice to Trieste. My thinking here is that, well, if Austria is going to leave Trieste open, I might as well take it. If he doesn't, and he does what he does here, it's not that big a deal. It doesn't make me, it doesn't commit me into any situation that I don't want to be. Uh, it's basically the same as holding, which is also a common move if you don't want to immediately go on the offensive. Um, the other two moves are very standard. Rome to Apulia is just to leave open the possibility that I can convoy it to Tunis or somewhere else if I had reason to. Uh, let's take a look at the other moves. Austria moves Vienna to Galicia, which in this case is defensive, uh, looking to bounce Warsaw to Galicia, which is a very common opening for Russia. Uh, this is not aggressive because if it was aggressive it would have been paired with Budapest to Romania if he was really going after Russia and trying to hold Romania as a center. Um, this is defensive, but Russia does not bounce him out. Um, Russia goes to Ukraine, Ukraine instead. Here, Sevastopol to Armenia is interesting because it is aggressive against Turkey, yet uh, gives Turkey the Black Sea to work with. But what is interesting about this, especially as far as I'm concerned, is that Russia makes a hostile move against Turkey. That, for me, is good, because I don't have to worry about these two being in alliance, having to, you know, potentially help Austria against them and getting into a deadlock here in the east, as often happens. It basically lets me pursue my attack against Austria should I choose to, because these two are fighting. So that's good for me. Um, what else here we have? Uh, Germany making an aggressive move against France. France making an aggressive move against England. England is very standard, and these all these three moves are standard. All right, so that's spring 01. Fall 01. I grab Tunis, as is normal. I decide to move Venice to Tyrolia uh, after seeing 
that Russia and Turkey are hostile to each other. I commit generally to an attack against Austria, especially knowing that Austria is only going to have the one build because Trieste is not going to be able to take Greece. So here I'm basically committing hostility against Austria. Here we also see Serbia bounce Constantinople out of Bulgaria while Bulgaria manages to take Greece. This is really good for Turkey. Had Serbia attacked Greece instead, it would have bounced Bulgaria out and prevented Turkey from being able to push up. This, however, will allow Turkey to support Constantinople to Greece in the next turn. Um, this is not necessarily a mistake from Austria because it, if you know Bulgaria went Serbia and Serbia went Greece, then Turkey's really behind Austrian lines. But it is definitely good for Turkey, this arrangement here. Turkey blocks Russia's attack on Ankara, which is, again, I think the problem with this attack. It gives Turkey the Black Sea, though theoretically Armenia could have just taken the Black Sea and allowed Turkey to go back to Ankara, but you don't know who's going to do that. Um, Austria signals friendship with Russia by supporting Sebastopol to Romania, probably thinking what I'm thinking as well, you know. Russia gave up Black Sea, now it could potentially want um, to build a navy here, but it can't do that because it takes Romania with Ukraine. So that's interesting. Uh, let's see what else here. France correctly guesses a German attack on Marseille, um, so good for France, while grabbing Belgium himself. So France, despite letting an ar a German army into Burgundy, manages to grab two builds this year, while scaring England in North Sea back to London, though England grabs Norway, and Germany prevents Russia from taking Sweden. And I should note that England takes Norway with the army, which is definitely more hostile to Russia than it would have been with the fleet. So, uh, I think this was a pretty interesting first year. It's pretty non-standard. So, with that, let's move on to builds. I build a fleet in Naples, which might seem a little strange. It might be more obvious to build an army or a fleet in Venice, and we'll see why I did that shortly. I have a very specific move in mind I want to make here. Austria, predictably, um, is threatened by my army in Tyrolia, expects me to attack him, and as such builds his one build in Vienna. Turkey builds army in Kara is what it is. Um, France builds two armies, which is definitely notable. Definitely anti-German. Chooses not to build a fleet in Marseille or Brest. Uh, let's see. England. Yep, normal. And Russia builds an army in St. Petersburg. Worried about England attacking him. Uh, and Germany builds one army. And Importantly, a fleet, definitely signaling that he's not just going after France. He wants to do something up here in Scandinavia, potentially against Sweden, or maybe he wants to move on the North Sea and to England. All right, so spring 02. Here is my specific move in mind here. Um, I move to Rolia to Trieste without moving anything to Venice, predicting that Austria will move Trieste to Venice thus allowing me to freely move into Trieste. I do this because I know that with this move, Apulia to Rome and Naples to Apulia, I can cover Venice, and the only way Austria will be able to defend Venice is Vienna defending Venice, but then I will surely have a province for Trieste to retreat to, should say, Budapest here, or if this had moved to Vienna, this unit combining with Serbia to kick me out. I will definitely have a retreat to move to, and in this situation, I want to create chaos for Austria. I want to make him play well, because I know I'm safe here. I have this unit in Tunis that has moved to Ionian, which will then go to Adriatic, which will be able to break Venice open should the Austrian army in Tyrolia insist upon defending Venice. 
And then in that situation, this army that is now in Trieste will still be behind Austrian lines and able to touch multiple centers and threaten aggressive action, while I'll be safe on my side. I'm essentially creating opportunities for Austria to screw up. And the only reason I built the fleet in Naples as opposed to Venice is because it makes the move Trieste to Venice look more obvious because it's easy for him to assume that I would move Apulia to Venice in this case. And the question of potentially building a fleet over an army, an a uh, fleet is definitely preferable because Austria has one fleet, and if I built a second one, then I have the ability to force Adriatic should I need to be able to. So, this attack against Austria, as it is, Galicia to Budapest is able to cover it. Had he not done this, I would have been in a much better position than I am. As it is, Austria made the correct move and will be able to contain it. Meanwhile, let's look at what else is happening. Turkey is doing the move I mentioned earlier, Constantinople to Bulgaria, supported by Black Sea and Greece, which in this case beats a, an Austrian support for Russia's Romanian unit into Bulgaria. So Austria is assisting Russia against Turkey here, but Turkey is winning regardless. Meanwhile, Germany uses his local superiority in Burgundy and Holland to force the French Navy out of Belgium, but France moves up his armies, Marseille to Burgundy, Paris to Picardy, and with Belgium able to retreat to English Channel, France should be able to guaranteed take Belgium back in the fall, provided England does not intervene. England, meanwhile, takes the North Sea, takes Barents Sea, positioning himself for an attack against St. Petersburg, bouncing Russia out of Sweden, while Germany moves his fleet build in Kiel into Heligoland Bight against England, interestingly. So we have Germany going up against both France and Britain, while Britain looks to be positioning himself for an anti-Russian. With that, let's take a look at the fall. The French Navy does indeed retreat to English Channel. And let's look back at my situation with Austria. Here I do my attack from Rome to retake Venice, moving Ionian to Adriatic, and I support the Austrian army in Tyrolia's move to Vienna. The idea behind that was to prevent a bounce, say, of Budapest and Vienna in case Austria did that while doing something stupid, say, supporting Serbia to Trieste from Venice, ensuring that if I managed to destroy this fleet somehow, he would not have been able to rebuild it. Regardless, Austria makes the correct move in this case, covering Vienna and retaking Trieste from Venice with the support of Budapest. So the result of this is a wash. My army has to retreat. I retake Venice. But in the process of this, Turkey is able to take Serbia from Austria. Meanwhile, Russia had supported from Romania a potential attack for the Austrian army in Serbia to Bulgaria, which in this case, combined with Armenia's cut of Black Sea support, would have succeeded. However, since these two powers can't communicate, Austria did not move to Bulgaria. We also see France correctly retake Belgium. England had actually offered France assistance, so that shows that England intends to be friendly with France. France ensures himself another build by taking Spain. Russia chooses to be conservative and support St. Petersburg to hold against a potential English attack, while England makes a failed attempt to take Sweden. So here's the result. 
from 1902. First we have to see retreats. The German army in Belgium retreats to Ruhr. The Austrian unit in Serbia retreats to Albania. I choose to destroy my army in Trieste instead of potentially retreating it either to Albania or to Tyrolia. I do this because I am now seeking a peace with Austria. The reason I am doing this is because I am scared of Turkey. Turkey now has one, two, three, four, five, six centers. Austria, meanwhile, has one, two, three. I have four. And Russia is in a bad position relative to Turkey, if Austria has to deal with me. Turkey looks like he is now in position to take Romania from Russia, and then after Sebastopol. So Turkey looks really strong. Meanwhile, I am not in a position to force Trieste without help from Turkey or Russia, and Russia certainly isn't going to give it. I could retreat to Tyrolia, and I would have Tyrolia, Venice, Adriatic, three units adjacent to Trieste. Meanwhile, Austria also has three units adjacent to or in Trieste. I could bring the Apulia fleet over to Albania, but that would take a lot of time, and Turkey, meanwhile, is already way too strong, in my opinion, and I expect him to become stronger at Russia's expense. So if I attacked Austria, my attack would basically be dependent upon Turkey not intervening, and in that time I would be at the mercy of Turkey. I would be leaving myself incredibly vulnerable, while at the same time ruining Austria's game, giving them a grudge that were I in their position, and it came down to it, and I had no hope of winning, I would favor and throw to Turkey before I would give anything to Italy here. So at this point, I am committed to ending my hostility with Austria and starting to put pressure on Turkey. So I choose to burn as opposed to going to Tyrolia. The only other option would be going to Albania, which I think is a bad decision because it would force the destruction of this Austrian army that is retreating there, which I expect is retreating there. It's its only option other, other than burning itself, and I don't expect them to do that. And allowing this army to go to Albania gives Austria the opportunity to burn the fleet in Trieste, because he has to burn something. And doing that is definitely preferable to me, because I want to be controlling the waves. Any fewer fleets in the Mediterranean that aren't mine is a good thing for me. So I burn the army with the thought of building another unit, which is going to be a fleet in Naples. So that's O2. My attack on Austria has gone through and failed. Meanwhile, France and Britain look friendly. France looks very strong, six centers. Not good news for me. Turkey looks very strong, also at six centers, about to snack on Russia a little bit. Germany has a lot of pressure from France and England, but still has a pretty decent position, while England is having a tough time gaining ground in Scandinavia. Let's go to the builds of O2. So, as I said, I built a fleet in Naples. Uh, this sends a strong signal to Austria that I have no intention of continuing to fight him. It's going to be a very hard time for me to gain any ground if I only have one army. Uh, it sends also a very strong signal to both France and Turkey, and that signal is, don't attack me, because I am a juggernaut. I'm going to control the sea lanes extremely easily. You're going to have a very hard time trying to attack me. So this is a very defensively strong assortment of units that I have here. I am going to try to use the fleets to attack Turkey, um, strongly signaling to Austria that, okay, I'm done with you, Turkey big, let's go get them. Uh, so let's see what else we have here. Turkey decides to build a fleet in Constantinople, as well as an army in Smyrna. This army definitely makes sense because he intends to push... Um, the Russian fleet in Armenia out, and if he builds a fleet here, then he can't really touch Armenia, so he builds an army instead. The fleet is just because, yeah, Turkey needs a fleet. He's got a lot of armies. Uh, France builds another army, which, e, 
One, two, three, four, five armies. So I guess he's committed to attacking Germany. I'm really not a big fan of this move. He's got... He needs a fleet. Um, and that's it. No one else has a build. So let's go. Spring 03. I move my fleets up. Apulia to Ionian. Naples to Tyranian. Taking a nice position in Tyranian and Ionian. Able to support each other. But eyeing Ionian to be able to sneak into Turkey's position over here. Uh, meanwhile, Venice supports Vienna to Trieste. This is merely a signaling move. I'm basically saying to Austria by doing this, hey, bring this unit down because I'm not attacking you anymore. Austria is not reacting to that yet. He is still in the defense mode. Uh, he moves Albania to Trieste, supported by Vienna, uh, intended to defend against an attack from me on Trieste. Um, meanwhile, Budapest supports Serbia to Romania for some reason. Not really sure why. Um, Romania, the, uh, the Russian unit in Romania, had supported Budapest to Serbia. It wouldn't have mattered. It would have been cut, but I'm not sure what the heck this move is. Um, meanwhile, Turkey is continuing his advance, attempting to take... Uh, Romania, but this fails because Armenia cuts the support of Black Sea, but that's not going to save him next turn because Turkey takes Armenia and removes that Russian fleet there. Um, meanwhile, Constantinople moves up to Aegean because he wants to cover his soft underbelly, which I am currently trying to get into. Uh, but yeah, Aegean's going to be able to defend Greece or, you know, maybe prevent my getting into his position back here. Uh, let's see what else happens. France moves up. Germany looks to try to block uh, France's move to Burgundy, but he's signaling that he wants to be friendly with France because his unit in Holland is supporting Belgium to hold. Germany wants to be friends with France, and this is evident. He's pushing into North Sea. It succeeds because England is starting to get impatient about not being able to take Sweden or something anything. Um, however, this time, uh, he does actually get into Sweden, so good for England. But losing North Sea, that's, that's a problem for England. Uh, Edinburgh is completely undefended here, so Germany might just walk into that. So that's the spring. Fall. Germany does indeed walk into Edinburgh. Even more, he convoys his army in Holland over to Edinburgh, which is a lot stronger than just taking with the fleet because this army can now threaten Liverpool. Germany is up into the British Isles and able to strike deep. However, at the same time, Britain sneaks into Denmark behind Germany, as well as taking Sweden. So Britain gets to gain while losing one, which means he's going to have a build, which means he's going to be able to build in Liverpool and potentially contain uh, this German army he's got up here. So England escapes this pretty good. All things considered, it's a lot better than it ought to be. And I'm just going to move on to France here. Oh, boy. Look at all these armies. One, two, three, four, five, just chilling with nothing to do. For my purposes as a player in this game, this is very good for me to see this France just doing nothing. But on the other hand, it saddens me. Like, you have all these armies. Why are you not attacking Germany? Or heck, me. Like, go through... Well, maybe not me. I'd be able to contain it pretty easily just because, you know, he doesn't have any fleets and I can just block Tuscany and be fine. But he can go through me to attack Germany, like Piedmont, Tyrol. That's an avenue because right now he can't get through... But the way England is playing right now, being able to get behind Denmark, Germany's going to have to either keep holding down here against France or address this English move. And, like, France and England could be cooperating against North Sea. It's a lot more difficult in a gunboat game because they can't talk to each other. But, I don't know, you have to do something. Like, what France is going to decide to do, because it's a problem of not being able to communicate here, is attack England because he has nowhere to go. But if he was going to do that, he should, like, have another fleet or something with which to do it. Otherwise, I mean, continuing to attack Germany here is viable. 
especially considering that England uh, is succeeding. So, eh, whatever. Meanwhile, how am I doing? So, I got my fleet in Ionian, and I got three ways to get into Turkey's position here. Greece, Aegean, or Eastern Mediterranean. Um, now, it's kind of a guessing game. And I bet that he's going to use a Aegean to cover Eastern Med, but I guess wrong, so I don't get in here. And uh, I have to guess right. Um, there's nothing else I can do. I can't force it. I mean, I could go to Albania and then try to maybe get into Greece from there, between Ionia and Albania, and that's probably what I should have done. Move Adriatic to Albania, as opposed to this support, which is basically doing nothing. Maybe... Maybe I intentionally decided to not do that because I want to keep open the possibility of attacking Austria um, or guard Venice against Austria, but probably mainly keep open the possibility of attacking Austria because, um, well, speaking of Austria, let's look at his moves. He takes Serbia back from Budapest while Turkey decides to cover Greece with the army he had in Serbia. So good for Austria. Uh... Though, with the Russian fleet in Armenia dislodged and the Turkish Black Sea fleet from the first move of the game, which I think is generally why, hey, Russia, you should probably not let Turkey take that, um, Turkey takes Sebastopol. So, this year, Turkey loses Serbia, but gains Sebastopol, so he's still at six. Um... Austria gains Serbia back, so we are both back at four. I fail to make any progress against Turkey. Uh, and Germany and England are fighting while France is sitting there with his thumb up his, you know what. So. Sebastopol retreats to Moscow. Builds 1903. Austria gets to build an army. Germany does not get to build because, while gaining Edinburgh, he lost Denmark. Britain gets to build an army in Liverpool, which has an obvious intention of attempting to retake Edinburgh from the Germans. So, spring 1904. I get to take another guess as to which province the Turks will cover, Aegean or Eastern Mediterranean. I guessed Eastern Mediterranean, Turkey guesses Eastern Mediterranean, so I lose two guesses in a row. Good job, Turkey. I am stalled. Uh, Venice offers Vienna um, signaling support to Trieste, while Trieste moves into Albania, getting into position to attack uh, Turkish-held Greece. So, good for Austria, but I'm not exactly gaining much out of this, now am I? Turkey takes Romania from Russia in its weakened state, so Russia, uh, so Turkey's up to seven now, if he gets to hold this. Germany gives up the North Sea in an attempt to retake Denmark, feels safe enough with France to allow Holland to go undefended, and allows Ruhr to go back to Kiel to guard against the English. England takes North Sea, getting into position to retake Edinburgh, but France decides to convoy his army in Picardy over to Wales to get in on the English action because he wants to be friends with Germany, with all his armies, for a reason. Um, Russia moves his army in St. Petersburg down because he's got to deal with the Turks because they're big and scary. Uh, so that's the spring of 04. The Russian army in Romania retreats to Galicia and the English fleet in, Balt in Denmark retreats to Baltic, which is a nice position to retreat to. Fall 04. In another round of will Italy get through into the eastern Mediterranean, I guess a GNC and Turkey <laughs> does not guess eastern Mediterranean. So that's three guesses in a row to Turkey. Congratulations. Oh my god. 
Meanwhile, I do this move with Venice and Adriatic up north. Venice to Piedmont. This, I expect, is because I'm scared of France just walking into Piedmont while I'm trying to do other things. And Adriatic to Venice, uh, probably to cover Venice, but maybe it has the added bonus of looking as innocent as possible to dear old Austria, my new best friend. Meanwhile, oh man, look at Turkey. Goodbye. Austria supports the Russian army that had retreated to Galicia back into Romania, succeeds, and Russian armies in Moscow and Ukraine coordinate against Sebastopol to take Sebastopol. So Turkey went from looking to be at 7 to back down to 5. Now, why did I switch from attacking Austria to Turkey again? Well, I don't know. Let's see next year. Meanwhile, France takes London from under England, so congrats. Um, these four armies are picnicking. While England successfully removes the German army in Edinburgh, following up to North Sea from Norway, ensuring he still has that, loses Denmark to Germany, and Baltic fails to take Berlin. So that's fall 04. Poor Turkey has to retreat from Sebastopol to Armenia, and his beautiful fleet is still beautiful and falling back to Black Sea. While Germany chooses to burn his army in the British Isles. This makes sense considering that an English fleet is in Baltic and he has nothing in Kiela, Berlin. He probably wants to build over here to do a rearguard action. So, builds 04. France building a fleet. England burning the Baltic fleet because he is no longer worse enemies with Germany. He's kicked Germany out. His new enemy is France because France is in London. And Germany does build the um, fleet in Berlin because he's worried about Baltic. Have fun taking Sweden now, I expect. Russia with a build. Congratulations. Got an army in Moscow. Makes sense. I suppose he could go north with that. Kind of hard to go south. Turkey's got that kind of covered. Uh, and Turkey burns the army in Constantinople. It's his best option. Uh, he can still hold this position, provided I don't intervene. He's got Armenia blocking Sebastopol from getting behind him. Black Sea supports Bulgaria to hold against possible two attackers, Serbia and Romania, while Aegean supports Greece to hold against two possible attackers, Albania and Serbia. Here's where I make up the difference. And it's nice to be in positions like these where you have the power to make up the difference, isn't it? So, Spring 05, though. <laughs> I'm in Trieste now. My reasons for attacking Turkey and allying with Austria are now gone. Turkey's not a threat anymore. Russia's got this locked down, and, um, well, if Austria's going to expand into Greece, then he's up to five, and I'm st still stuck at four. That doesn't suit me. Um, I'm lucky that this succeeded. Aegean had the ability to defend Greece, but chose not to, I guess because he was concerned about me, which is what it is, but it allows the Austrian army in Serbia to take Greece with Albania's support. Uh, Trieste follows up to Serbia. Trieste is left empty. Good old innocent me with my fleet in port and my army in the Alps move into Trieste and Tyrolia, respectively while my army in Ionian moves into the Adriatic in a good position to squash Austria. Now, had Austria not gotten into Greece and thereby not letting me get into Trieste, how would this have played out? I would have had an army in Tyrolia and a navy in Venice and Adriatic, so a combined total of three units opposing Trieste and one unit opposing Vienna, Tyrolia, I would not have had a guaranteed attack on Trieste, but Turkey would not 
be able to wrestle Ionian from me, Tyranian would move there, um, and potentially have the support of Adriatic if it needed it. So I still cannot break it, guaranteed, but assuming Turkey would like to take Serbia and attack Austria here, this attack surely looks like it will bear fruit. And my position vis-a-vis -vis Turkey would now be of more equal strength than it was before when Turkey was a behemoth and I was just trying to pick up some scraps. But, through sheer craziness, I managed to merely float my little boat into the port of Trieste. And, uh, yeah, now I have three units in total in it and adjacent to it, so Austria cannot remove me from it because he only has one, two, three, and this army can also just attack Vienna. So, good stuff. That's a good stab right there. Meanwhile, Russia's got his stuff locked down. Turkey's attack on him is basically over. Um, right, I did say this army in Moscow might go north, but if he wants to play extremely conservative, then... He has to defend Sebastopol against Black Sea and Armenia, and Ukraine wants to defend Romania against Black Sea and Bulgaria, assuming Austria is friendly. So, yeah, I get it. Meanwhile, what's happening in the West? Germany is moving his fleet in Berlin into a position to snack on Scandinavia, and France is making a gigantic error. Yeah, he's merely letting Britain move Liverpool to Wales, Edinburgh to York, getting three units adjacent to London, where he only has two defenders. He, he clearly should have moved something like English Channel to Wales, or maybe, yeah, better yet, Picardy to Wales, convoyed by English Channel. Definitely that. Uh, Brest to mid makes sense because he's getting this fleet into position to go up north and west over here. Uh, these armies are going south, I guess, to get convoyed, but this one doesn't need to move. It can get convoyed right where it's at, so, yeah. Um, but, yeah, France looks like it's going to lose London. And, sucks. Anyway. Let's see, here's the summer and the fall. France does lose London. He moves mid-Atlantic into Irish Sea. Spain moves back to Gascony. Why not? Germany covers Munich, because France and myself are adjacent to it. Okay, fine. Germany takes Sweden. Good. Makes sense. So, England regains London from France this turn, but loses Sweden to Germany. So, that's a wash for England, but Germany goes up one. And down here, for me, I have Trieste covered, so that's a plus for me. Austria prevents me from taking Vienna as well. He has gained Greece. So he's not going to have to remove a unit. He still has one, two, three, four after this year. But my navy in Tyrrhenian is now an Ionian, moving up. And Austria is going to have a difficult time holding all this stuff between Turkey and myself. I have a build, so I'm probably going to build another army and push this up somehow. And nothing happens between Russia and Turkey. Turkey manages to defend Bulgaria against a combined Austrian-Turkish attack. So, good. So, yeah, that's 05. England chooses to disband his army in Sweden, really giving up on trying to hold Norway, too, with that move. But in so doing, he allows himself to build in what is now undefended Liverpool because he wants to screw France because yeah, I entirely agree with his decision to screw France here. So that's that. Build time. I do build an army in Venice. England builds a fleet in Liverpool because screw France. 
Germany builds an army in Kiel, which he can do a lot with. If he wants to stay friendly with France, he can go and play with Russia a little bit, grab the rest of Scandinavia, and then eventually with these fleets maybe move on England. So let's move on to Spring 06. Okay, I guess that Austria is extremely pissed at me and throws everything he has with this Albanian army into retaking Trieste. And I'm looking to destroy the army in Albania by putting three attacks on it, expecting that the only way this survives is that basically Austria does this. But in so doing, he leaves Vienna undefended and allows me to take it. I don't understand in what world I wouldn't be taking Vienna here. So, even if this succeeds, kicks me out, destroys this fleet, I still have three adjacent to Trieste, and I'm definitely in Vienna. He would have the army in Albania in Trieste, as well as Budapest and Serbia adjacent, but Turkey's in the area too, and I don't know if there's a better move for him here, but... Yeah, that, that's a stinky result, even if it wins. I don't know if there's anything better. Probably not, given his situation stuck between me and everyone. So, this is good for me. This stays static while I just nab Vienna. Austria, and so trying to do this move, keeps the Albanian army alive, but Turkey takes Greece in the process, destroys that army while Black Sea feels free to move up and guard Bulgaria without having to worry about giving any Russian fleet that doesn't exist access to Black Sea. Nothing over here happens. Russia is still doing very little with his four armies right here. He needs to be doing something more. Germany moves to take Norway from England while signaling a defensive posture with England. This move might just be a nothing. It might not even be meant to be signaling. Maybe it's signaling something he doesn't actually intend. Because if he's taking Norway at the same time. Maybe he wants to move through and take St. Petersburg or something. Who knows? But, Germany also moves Kiel to Ruhr to, I guess, plug this hole that France should be filling, but isn't. France isn't doing anything. I guess maybe a little demoralized after having lost London in so embarrassing a fashion. England moves his fleet into a position adjacent to English Channel, whereby he can, in conjunction with the fleet in North Sea, potentially kick France out of the English Channel. That is Spring 06. Fall 06, I want to get this army in Venice up forward, adjacent to Budapest and Serbia, so I can start potentially grabbing this stuff, especially before Turkey has an opportunity to do the same. So, I try to get this Trieste fleet out of the way by taking Albania with it, thereby destroying the army, though that doesn't really matter, but just getting the fleet out of the way so the army can advance and touch Budapest. Turkey defends his re-reconquest of Greece, while Russia finally does something with these armies, moving Ukraine to Galicia to potentially either guard Austria or, more hopefully, get in on the spoils, grabbing Budapest in conjunction with Romania or something. Germany makes an attack on Belgium with Holland and Ruhr, cutting the support of Burgundy with Munich. The French support on the English Channel of Belgium would have sufficed, however, London pushes into English Channel, cutting that support because screw France, thereby Germany takes Belgium. Germany tries again to take Norway, but this is blocked by England, though this Baltic fleet moving up into position now puts three German fleets up here against the really only one English fleet in the North Sea. England's trying to break out his fleet in Liverpool to do something with it. France is back, probably really wishing he had a third fleet right now. 
he decides to defend English Channel with Irish Sea against an attack that would never actually come between North Sea and London because North Sea is worried about Norway. France attempts to defend Belgium, but because he's pissed England off, England prevents him from so doing. Gascony moves back up to Brest. It's just doing a tour of France. So that's the fall of 06. In the retreat phase, France pulls Belgium back to Picardy. Builds. I build an army in Venice because I still only have two armies, so I'd like another one if I'm going to start fighting in the Balkans. I'd like another army to be in Bohemia and move into Galicia, Budapest, get in on that action. Turkey builds a fleet in Constantinople. From my perspective, this fleet should only be built if it's intended to be either aggressive or defensive against me, but in that case it should be built in Smyrna just because it wants to directly touch Eastern Mediterranean. So that's a weird choice, just to build it there. Otherwise, an army would have sufficed if he intends to bring Bulgaria back to Black Sea, put this up here. Um, Germany builds an army in Berlin, while France burns uh, one of his useless armies in Brest. So, spring 07. I play pretty conservatively this turn. Um, I'm worried about the potential for... Austrian-Russian cooperation against me because I have yet to really see Russia take an aggressive uh, move against Austria. So I'm merely guarding Vienna and Trieste here against possible attacks from Galicia, Budapest, and Serbia. Moving Venice to Tyrolia only guards against Germany. It doesn't help me move up much, but these two moves down south, the Ionian fleet to Tyranian and the fleet in Albania to Ionian frees up Albania for an army move there if I ever want to potentially break through against Serbia, and also gives me some flexibility with being able to maybe think about moving this fleet west to attack French-held Iberia, and also potentially gives the impression that I'm thinking of going that way to Turkey to maybe feel less nervous about my potential expansion here. So that's my move. It doesn't do much. I do give defensive support for Austrian-held Budapest here because I don't want Russia or Turkey expanding into Austria. I kind of want all of that for myself. So I give Austria defensive support. He doesn't need it. Um, he has his own support. But interestingly, <clears throat> Turkey gives Austrian-held Serbia support. Um, now, that's a very important signal to me. It shows that Turkey is nervous about my expansion and will defend Austria's position in Serbia if it means I don't get to take it. We're going to see where that goes in a few turns. Turkey moves his fleet that he built in Constantinople to Black Sea. I kind of think this is a mistake. Either this needs to be an army that goes to Bulgaria and Bulgaria goes to Black Sea, or it can be a fleet and he commits to an alliance with Russia against me. Um, we might not even need it to be a fleet in that case. It might, it might just be better to have an army that's capable of attacking Bulgaria, but I can see it being a fleet if he wants to bring this fleet south and get all of his three fleets in Greece, Aegean, and Eastern Med and try to hammer against Ionian, or at least put pressure on me down here. I mean, I definitely think allying with Russia is a viable option for Turkey right here. Like, reset. I mean, Russia doesn't have any fleets. It's going to be very hard for him to threaten Turkey. I don't see a reason against forming an alliance with Russia other than the fact that it's going to be hard to break through me at Ionian here. 
But that's certainly no easier than it is for Turkey to break through in Romania and Sebastopol again with Russia's four armies that have been so committed for so long to merely defending those two provinces. And furthermore, I am an existential threat to Turkey, whereas Russia is not. Turkey blocking Armenia off right here basically ensures that he cannot be attacked by Russia unless Russia manages to build a fleet in Sebastopol. Meanwhile, all I have to do is eventually guess right about getting into Aegean or Eastern Mediterranean, and then I can crash his whole house of cards, basically. And one last thing that this turn makes rather obvious, I don't have anyone to my west that uh, could potentially pose a problem to me. France, like, theoretically could, but both of his fleets are up in England, and he's clearly fighting England. Whereas Germany has some troops to spare to fight Russia. A lot, in fact. Like, not just these two armies that are obviously making a play on Russia, um, but these three fleets up here can screw up and take St. Petersburg. Russia's got, like, more to worry about than I do. So if I'm Turkey, I'm definitely prioritizing Russia as a friend over me. I'm going after Italy if I'm Turkey here. So that's that. Uh, yeah, what else happened? Germany is making a little play on Russia here. Sees that, well, it's going to be hard to break through in France. I have these armies. I might as well do something with them. Plus, France doesn't look like he's ever going to attack me. He's had ample opportunity to and, is, and has instead attacked England. So, yeah, Prussia, Silesia, let's go attack Russia and take some stuff off of him. Um, meanwhile, taking North Sea as well, because England has to constantly use North Sea to defend Norway. He knows it's really not going to be supported unless he's going to just walk into Norway. So, well done, Germany. Takes North Sea, incredibly vital, cracks England's defense, um, and basically guarantees himself Norway. Um... If he wants it in the fall. So, good job, Germany, definitely. France. France blocks an English attempt to get into Mid-Atlantic from North Atlantic. Uh, having a nice, easy swipe at Portugal. Um, honestly, probably bad for England. That he didn't let France go. Um, might rather have sent this fleet east had he known that this was happening but you know france has not exactly been competent this whole time so and i'm sure he's pissed at him so that makes sense so let's go to the fall first the retreat uh yeah germany takes north sea but this allows england to retreat to um holland Germany should be able to cover this, though, assuming France continues his policy of doing nothing. Uh, maybe he'll surprise us, who knows. Um, yeah, Germany can, can contain this. Belgium or Ruhr to Holland, and then the fleet in the Heliga Land covers Kiel. Um, and, well, now Norway's certainly, yeah, German. Okay, fall. Let's see what happens there. Yep. <laughs> France does nothing. Germany's got it covered. No biggie. Um, though France is leaving. If you're not attacking Germany, then you're attack. Uh, okay. Germany takes Norway. England takes North Sea back, but now he's got only, um, three centers. Stinks. Feel sorry for England. Germany moves Silesia back to Munich. Probably not even worried about France. This is probably just me being here. Um, and Russia reacts, ensuring Warsaw is safe, but Prussia takes a very strategic position in Livonia. Uh, St. Petersburg is clearly falling next year. Um, and now my move. I move the army in Trieste up to Albania, and the army in Tyrolia up to Trieste. This gives me two units adjacent to Serbia, though with this Turkish unit in Greece defending it, looks like I'm going to have a difficult time trying to get into it next year. 
My fleets do nothing. They maintain their static position ready to pounce. Eastern Mediterranean has been open for quite a while. So, Austria assists Turkey by supporting Bulgaria to Romania. Turkey didn't need the support because Russia wanted to cover Warsaw and Turkey cut the support of Sebastopol, so Turkey's getting Romania regardless. But the fact that Austria's supporting Turkey is significant just for the fact that Austria is helping Turkey. So, that's that. That is fall 1907. Um, Russia's got a retreat from Romania, going back to Galicia. And now he's going to have to burn something. And that's probably going to just be Bothnia. But Russia's in a bad spot now. So yeah, builds. Okay, Russia decides to keep the fleet in Bothnia. Respectable, but with what hope of getting anywhere? With four German fleets and four non-German fleets that are have little hope of ever doing anything against German fleets. Speaking of German fleets, Germany builds a fleet. Completely correct, I think. It's time to go and eat England and dominate the Atlantic. And get into Brest and stuff. Constantinople army. Absolutely, if you can get one of these fleets down, which it's not going to be able to. That's foreshadowing. But, yeah. Makes sense. Springtime. Um, here I have a guaranteed attack on Budapest, because Russia no longer has two armies adjacent to it. Uh, Serbia can defend Budapest, but I have an army in Albania here that moves to cut the support of Serbia. So Trieste is definitely getting into Budapest. I also intentionally left Trieste open on the possibility that Austria did exactly this, moving the Armia in Serbia to Trieste in hopes of, you know, maybe my doing a Vienna to Budapest, supported by Trieste, and hoping he could cut the support that way. I moved Adriatic to Venice instead of, like, Adriatic to Trieste in hopes that Serbia would be able to get into Trieste, and then as a consequence my move to cut Serbia's support for Budapest, Albania to Serbia, would get into Serbia. Uh, that's exactly what happened. Um, and now my whole worry of having to knock against the wall to get myself into Serbia with Turkish support, I expected this army in Constantinople to move to Bulgaria to make it a little harder. Now I don't have to worry about that. I still would have been able to do it with like one of these fleets attacking Greece, provided I had armies in Budapest, Trieste, and Albania. Um, but if an intervention happened, like, say, Munich to Tyrol, which we currently see happening, that would throw a wrench in things. So I'm glad this worked. Um, I have the ability to get rid of Trieste safely, I think. I think this Munich to Tyrol move does gum up the works a little bit, but not too much. I mean, if they were able to talk and coordinate, it would be a lot more dangerous, but since it's gunboat, it's a little safer. So that's my move. I'm going to gobble up the rest of Austria, so that's excellent for me, and after that, I think I'm ready to continue against Turkey. I should have the advantage, provided a non-large intervention from Germany and or France occurs. Um, so yeah, but Turkey, that move Constant Constantinople to Bulgaria doesn't happen. He convoys it to Black Sea, which succeeds, but Russia forces Romania back to Bulgaria. With this move, Russia should maybe have a chance of holding on to Romania by doing a Moscow and Ukraine supporting Romania back to Sebastopol. There is a weird move Turkey could do to deflect it. I think Armenia supporting the Constantinople and Sebastopol to hold with black supporting it to hold and then this supports Bulgaria to Romania. It, it's, it probably wouldn't do it. Russia has a chance to gain this back but Turkey's really in control of this situation here. Um, 
Yeah, Russia's kind of screwed. He's losing St. Petersburg, too. Though, he's in Berlin. Yeah, this fleet got through to Baltic. And the two defenders, Munich is in Tyrol, and Kiel's in Heligoland Bight. So, Russia's getting Berlin. As far as I'm concerned, that's great. Screw with Germany. You coming down to Tyrolia? No. <laughs> Get screwed with. Um, France does zero. Beautiful moves. Um, England's just basically, I guess, begging France to do something here. He's holding his position in North Sea, bringing Edinburgh down to like guard London against crazy France, bringing the Liverpool fleet into North Atlantic to probably try to go east. England needs France to work against Germany with him, and for France it's probably the only possibility, because if he's not going to work with England against Germany, and he's just going to let England die to Germany, then England might as well rip into France to survive. If France wanted to, like, actually do something and attack me, then he's going to leave himself open to England dying to Germany, who will then just die into France, because it's France's fault that England's dead. So, England desperately wants France to do something against Germany here, but France is not going to budge. So that's the spring of 08. I'm in a good position. Turkish fleet in Romania retreats to Bulgaria. It's the only place it can go. Budapest army retreats to Galicia. It's the only place it can go. Fall. I take Trieste back from Adriatic. Germany decides not to help Austria at all. Um, it wouldn't have mattered had he supported Trieste to Vienna. I had it covered because Galicia decided to yeet itself into Russia in hopes of surviving there. This really screws Russia. Russia loses Romania. Turkey nearly does the move that would have won against Moscow, Ukraine supporting Romania to Sebastopol, but he doesn't. But Russia doesn't do that, so he doesn't get to save Sebastopol or this army. So Turkey takes Romania. Um, I signal a little friendship, whatever, with Turkey by support holding on Greece while noticing that for a very long time this Aegean fleet has just kind of sat there and support held Greece, leaving Eastern Med a little bit exposed. Though, Turkey's got a build here, so maybe he blocks it off. But I take Budapest and Serbia, so we are now up to eight centers. Turkey's up to seven here, uh, taking both of these. Russia is down to now just two. He's got Moscow, he's got Berlin. Germany takes St. Petersburg. Germany moves Tyrolia back to Munich and something. Legal and bite back to Kiel because he was just like, oh shit, I need to get Russia out of here. Um, takes North Sea again from Denmark this time. So he's got the position on England again. England covers London against crazy France. Moves North Atlantic to Norwegian Sea because he has to attack Germany with France. France does nothing, and that's 1908. Austria retreats to Tyrolia. He's going to have to burn one of these. Russia retreats to Galicia. He's going to have to burn a lot of these. Uh, UK retreats to Edinburgh. Makes sense. He's got to cover his home stuff. Yeah. Builds. Russia burns half his force. Austria burns the one in Tyrolia, hoping to survive. I build two armies, Rome and Naples. I think the reason I did this was that I need to be defensive here. So, I've got these two fleets here that are going to join the third one down here and blocking off anything coming from Tyranian or Ionian. Um... But I'm worried about Piedmont with France. I mean, theoretically, he could do something. Um, but I only have three armies 
in Vienna, Budapest, and Serbia. I definitely need more armies. I figured I'm good on the navies, so I need two extra armies up here to defend against Germany just walking into Tyroli and being adjacent to three centers here guarding Tyrolia. So Piedmont, Tyrolia, and then the potential combination of Germany doing stuff and Bohemia uh, combined with Turkey doing Galicia, Romania against Budapest, that sort of stuff. So maybe I want an extra defense in Trieste, something like that. So I think these are defensive moves. Uh, Turkey builds an army, though, in Constantinople, which I guess makes sense because he's got two navies here that have zero attacking potential whatsoever. He should want to get one or both of these navies down into the Mediterranean and this army into Bulgaria, Romania. Potentially grab what's left of Russia over here uh, and then fight me. <laughs> but Eastern Med's still open and it's been open for a while. So, spring. This is definitely a reposition move for me. I'm um, bringing the navies down south into the Mediterranean where they need to be. I convoy an army into Albania to ensure I got a defense for Serbia against these two armies that are now here. Budapest goes to Galicia because Romania can't attack me, so there's no reason to stay here, and I might as well fight off anything that is coming this way, and if I can be here, then that's even better. I'm further away guarding uh, this approach. Vienna goes to Tyrolia because I'm still worried about Germany. So, Turkey holds in Romania. He brings the Bulgarian fleet back into the Black Sea. Um, but he's still going to just have one fleet sitting here and not doing anything to guard Eastern Med. Um, Russia burned Berlin, so Germany just goes in and takes it. Germany fails to make progress against England in the north, and France thinks it's an awesome time to attack England again. Yes, he's turned his back. I'm going in for the kill. So, Godspeed. That's the spring. Austria. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, Russia takes Warsaw back. Congratulations. Um... Yeah, cool. Austria's got to retreat to Livonia. And fall. Oh, yeah. All right. Austria's dead. Uh, Russia takes and, well, ensures that Moscow's safe. Got German support. Guess maybe Germany feels bad or something. That's cool. Well, Russia's holding on to two here. Austria's gone. Uh, Russia loses Berlin back to Germany. Uh, but that's that. Cool. Let's see. All right. Germany does the correct move this time. Moves North Sea to Norwegian Sea. Uh, makes progress. Holland's got to wait, though. France did a thing! Not only did he attack Liverpool and take it, which... Brilliant. You really shouldn't be doing this part. But this part down here is great! Attack Berlin! Yes! Awesome! Cool! That is so cool. It's like, I don't know, maybe France got replaced or something. Well, that wouldn't make sense. He moved the last turn. I don't know. Um, uh, I reposition my fleets a little further. Getting one in Tunis. Trying to stay flexible here. Might, might go after France. Probably not after he gets these two builds, but it was in the cards prior to that. Um, but looking to be versatile, making sure Turkey, like, isn't absolutely sure I'm coming, hence the defensive posture here. Serbia's just like, I like you, Romania, I'm going to support your defense. Um, Galicia goes back to Budapest for some reason. Maybe I, I don't know, I'm signaling to Russia that I'm your friend or something, I'm going to help you against Turkey, maybe. Um... Tyrolia goes to Munich because, well, if, if he just leaves it and I get in it, that's great because I consider Germany my main rival here. Well, other than Turkey. But, like, Turkey and Germany are my main rivals and I'm afraid of them squeezing me. So, yeah, if I can get Munich, that's great. But also to block this move, which I kind of see expected, that Munich is going to put pressure on me up here. 
so might as well block the follow-up, which I do, um, and just guard against France doing something with Piedmont. So that's fall. Um, Norwegian Sea retreats to North Atlantic. Congratulations, France up to seven. Same as Turkey. What's Germany at? Oh, yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Right, okay. So Germany and I are both at eight. France and Turkey are both at seven. Interesting. Uh, okay. So, builds. I don't have a build. Turkey doesn't have a build. France builds a fleet in Brest. Good. You're going to want to fight for the, the Atlantic. And an army in Marseille. Eh... Yeah. I'll probably go fleet. I think you got these three armies here locked down and Well maybe not. Maybe if you convoyed Picardy to Wales and you wanna do follow up or something, then it makes sense. Yeah. And Germany builds Army Munich. Makes sense because these two units are here. Alright, so springtime nineteen ten. France decides to not reinforce the UK with uh, a convoyed army from Picardy. He decides his armies are great, and they're back to picnicking after they retook Belgium. They're just going to sit there and do nothing while he brings this fleet south, leaving Liverpool open to English counterattack, uh, meaning he will need to either choose to defend Liverpool or choose to attack London with support. He cannot do both. More brilliant play. Love to see it. Germany's doing the correct play, which is moving up his fleet position in North Sea vis-a-vis the British Isles and Belgium now that he lost it. Um, so Germany's set up to keep making plays against uh, in the Atlantic. Um... I am I have a defensive posture in Austria against Germany here. I'm just bouncing myself in Vienna. I don't really expect Munich and Bohemia to combine on an attack against Tyrolia, nor can I really do much about it if they chose to. So I just bounce Vienna. But here I go for my attack against Turkey. You left Eastern Mediterranean open for like, I don't know, how many turns in a row, so I feel pretty safe in just being like, all right, I'm going to go for it, get the flank on Aegean, grab Aegean. You don't even have a second fleet down here. You move this Black Sea fleet into Bulgaria instead of Constantinople where it should be going. So, did he build that army? Oh, that army went to Smyrna. Instead of, like, doing a Sebastopol to Ukraine, Armenia to Sebastopol thing. That's some... That's some... Yeah. I don't know how I feel about that. Look, yeah, Russia's going in to, like, go and take Sebastopol back. Go, Russia! Let's go! Come back of the century. Um... Does he survive? No, I think he dies. That's too bad. But, yeah, I'm going in for my attack. Let's go. Fall... Um, okay, I could have taken Aegean, but instead I had a guaranteed attack on Greece, so I took that instead because I wanted to build because I need an army up here to guard against the northern frontier. Cool. Yep, I got Greece. Turkey's moving this army into Galicia because he needs to have some ma means of attacking me with these fleets just chilling on the uh, Baltic coast and in the Baltic Sea. Uh, well, at least it defends against Russia's renewed attack. Go Russia! Um, Alright, so France loses Liverpool to England. Takes London in the process, though, so that's good. I suppose if he convoyed that army the last turn and kept this here. Where did... Okay. Brest couldn't have helped. But... Yeah, it would have been a guess either way. But England is just clearly, like, 
totally pissed at France here, so he's going to sabotage him instead of defending Edinburgh because obvious reasons. Um, meanwhile, Germany moves up. Da -da 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 -da. It's time to get quicker because the steamroll is about a steamroll. Army Venice. Rip UK Army in York. You have one unit left. And Germany builds another army because he needs to play for this territory in Russia and stop me, probably. Or maybe, I don't know. Get an angle on France. Can he attack here? No, not yet. Um, well, he can if France... Oh, yeah, he can. Okay. So, spring 1911. Uh, there is no way Turkey can hold a Gian. He could have brought Bulgaria down. I don't know if it was a good idea or not, but I'm not going to keep analyzing every single move now that we're getting into the post-1910 years. Alright, so I take a Gian. Uh, got a beautiful angle on Smyrna and Bulgaria now. So that's that. Army's moving up. Guarding against the French approach. Uh, I take Romania here, do I? Yeah, because Russia's being a boss and attacking Sebastopol to cut support because he's mad at Turkey. Which, I, yeah, I think that's freaking genuine too because Turkey, like, should have been his buddy. Turkey should have allied with him. That was probably a better play. He should have attacked me. Turkey should have attacked me and allied with Russia and now did he, and since he didn't, Russia's screwed. So absolutely, go Russia, screw Turkey. Um, I also cut support in Bulgaria, so I got Romania. Awesome. Um, Germany successfully attacks Belgium, cutting support in Burgundy. Uh, the French fleet in English Channel moved into London last turn, so it's not there to support it. So this is a guaranteed attack. Norwegian Sea moves up. Brilliant. In play to now push English Channel, combined with the fleet in Belgium. In Belgium. Um... France knocks out Liverpool. Rip England. England deserved a lot better than that. He's also a good player. I think I remember. I looked at the, the leaderboard and he was up there in Gunboat. Um, I'm not on the leaderboard in Gunboat, though, because I don't play it enough. But if I played it more, I would be. <laughs> uh, let's see. So Germany's moving down to deal with it. All right. Okay, cool. Let's go to... Retreats, retreat, retreat, okay. Fall. I got a flanking attack on Bulgaria here, I expect, right? So I got one, two, three, four strength on this. Yeah. So the only way he can defeat this is with Galicia, Sebastopol, Black Sea, supporting Bulgaria to Romania, but that would only break, break it. It would be a tie, so... I'm getting this build no matter what. That's guaranteed. Um, and Germany. Beautiful. I didn't even know this was going to happen. Belgium to English Channel. Yeah, Germany knows what he's doing. Belgium, English Channel. Grabs that. Got a beautiful flank on France's position now. Grab and go into mid-Atlantic. That'd be so beautiful. You no, know, well, actually, what he probably wants to do is go after me that way. Maybe. I don't know. I think he does at some point because I'm a solo threat. Um... Follows up, takes Belgium, brilliant. Uh, yeah, moving up, getting ready to attack Liverpool and stuff. There's going to take a while to be able to do that. Good stuff from Germany. All right, that's 1911. Turkish fleet in Bulgaria has got to retreat to black. Ing, uh, French fleet in English Channel retreats to mid. Right place to go, definitely. Soft underbelly. Um, yep. Builds. France gets a build because... I think his army got destroyed in Belgium. Right. France gets a build, but he's neutral. He lost Belgium, but got Liverpool. Builds a fleet. Correct. Um, army Kiel. Also correct. He needs more against this whole thing in the east. Um, 
I build an army because I need more s oopsies. I build an army because I need more armies for this whole thing in the east. Turkey's down one. Yes. Okay. Spring nineteen twelve. The Titanic sinks. I have a guaranteed attack on Smyrna. Yes. I will sacrifice this army in Bulgaria, but since this attack is guaranteed and Greece is following up to Aegean, I guess technically this army could be destroyed if he did something else like Constantinople to Aegean, but he's not going to do that. So, yeah, this army gets to retreat. I get Smyrna, and then I should still probably have an angle on Bulgaria in the fall. That's the play, or maybe it's Constantinople in the fall. Who knows? Um, Vienna's moving up to Galicia to get an angle on Romania again. Um, I have enough armies in Venice, in, in over here. This Venice one allows me to protect Tyrol while still moving the armies up against Germany, who sees the writing on the wall and sees that I'm a big threat and is coming for me. Russia going for St. Petersburg like a freaking boss, man. Let's go. You're doing good for me, Russia. You are really helping me out. Um, okay, Germany is cracking French skulls. Ha! <laughs> Liverpool leaves. Come on. Okay. Uh, <laughs> France retreats to Wales. You better take that back. You do, right? Okay, yeah, I retreat to Greece. Uh, what's my play? Okay, my play is... One of these is, has, is like, guaranteed, right? To attack here. This one has to defend... Here, what if it defends here? This is still good. Well, if I put these, if these two units were involved, it wouldn't be a guessing game. But the way I have it set up, it's a guessing game. But I guess I'm prioritizing momentum and trying to keep moving. Um, oh, no. Right here. Oh, I remember doing this. This was, I fully intended to bounce Germany out of Warsaw. I fully intended to guard Warsaw. I expected Silesia to Warsaw. I saw that Russia was being awesome, grabbing St. Petersburg from Germany, and I thought, oh no, I better guard Warsaw against Silesia. So I did this, and I'm so glad I did. Though, if I just walked into it, that would have been good too, because then I'm like, you know, getting ready to push into Prussia, Silesia, Bohemia, grab uh, these two stalemate um, uh, centers, getting over to 18. Like, these two are very critical, just if you don't know this. If you're this far into the video and you don't know that these two uh, centers can are like on the stalemate line or past it then I don't know but yeah these two centers are important for me um, I don't get them actually but it works out regardless I should have gotten them I just got so unlucky but anyway we'll get there um, yeah cool so okay France does correctly like not lose Liverpool here uh, he loses London though and Germany's still advancing on him Go Germany, even though really go France, but you know, I hate France. So that's that. Okay, retreats occur. Russia's got a third build. Let's go. I want another fleet because it's time to start thinking about cracking stalemate lines, and this isn't the only one. There's another one over here, and I gotta go get it. So I need another fleet, that's why. Other things happen as well. Spring 1913. Yo, <laughs> I just got a fleet in the Black Sea while there's two goddamn Turkish fleets guarding the coast. Let's go. Um, guaranteed attack against Bulgaria, right? Yes, correct. Um, yep, safe entirely. Now I'm going for the big picture here. Bohemia, I want to get adjacent to Munich, Silesia, blah, 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 blah. Russia, I'm going to leave alone for a moment just because, you know, maybe he'll just be a bro for me, which he's kind of being up here, keeping these two units occupied. Excellent job. Uh, Germany's still going for it. I wonder where he goes after here. I wonder if he goes Irish Sea to Mid-Atlantic. I wonder if he keeps going because, well, Napoleon, uh, uh, Napoleon. Naples is going west because i got to go west and get fleets west to win. I'm going for the solo. Um, 
Yeah, so Germany, curb stomps, France. Let's see where that goes, actually. Yeah, it does go for Western Med, and I block it. Good job, Germany. Germany was good. Germany was a good player. Uh, Germany and England were both very good players in this game, I'd say. Uh, I don't know about Austria. I don't really think I had enough opportunity to tell. Let's see. Fall 1913. Expanding the position. Galicia trying to get an angle on Silesia. Get in there. Meaningless attack on Munich. Might as well. And guaranteed attack on Romania. Yep. Yeah. Pretending to be friends with France. Really wishing I had not done that move and just went in because that would have been hilarious if I just got into Marseille that way. Uh, would have been able to kick me out, though. I could have just gone to Gascony. Maybe. Stupid enough to have left that open. Maybe Fran Maybe Germany would have guarded it. So. Oh, wait, no. Burgundy's not even here. Ugh, oh, that would have been so good. Okay. So. Stuff is still occurring over here. Russia's supporting Finland to Norway. Why is he doing that? I don't know. Is he trying to be tricky? We'll see. Retreats occur. I'm gobbling Turkey up. I'm at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. I need 18. So here's 14, here's 15, here's 16, here's 17. These are all basically mine, I think. I don't think Germany can really stop me from getting them. So 18, 18, 18, 18. All over here. Just need to get across. Which, yeah, if I was in Marseille right now, that'd be great. Okay, builds another fleet, because I need to get west. Army, because... I don't know. Do I need another one? You can do the t calculation if you want. Alright, Anchor is mine. These fleets are going to move west now. Germany sees the writing on the wall. France is just like... AFK. Um, Germany's coming to stop me, because I need to be stopped. Uh, I get into Munich. I don't think I can hold it, though. Yo, Russia's supporting me into Silesia. That's brilliant. Not even expecting that, but yeah. Trying to get into into here. It's happening. Uh, Russia still being a bro. Throwing. Attacking Germany. Like a boss. Okay... Yeah, do I screw this up? Oh, yeah, I remember this move. Okay, so... Berlin, supported by Kiel and Rohr. If he had used Berlin for support, I would have been good. If I had... Or if I had done Silesia to Berlin, I would have walked into Berlin that way. Uh, and then Munich could have retreated to Silesia. Bohemia would be gone. This move, Galicia to... Bohemia, supported by Tyrolia, Vienna, uh, Trieste covers Vienna, therefore this is dead. Um, I don't know, I might have been good. I guessed wrong here, I think. I think if I had guessed correctly, I might have been, like, extremely solid in this moment. I don't care enough to analyze it right now. Um, but maybe, who knows. Um... Germany's trying to push me off, maybe grab Tunis, but that's definitely not going to happen. I de I'm definitely good down here. He just wants to ensure that I can't, you know, grab a center in Marseille or Spain. And he's not confident in France's ability to do anything about it. So, he's doing it himself. Makes perfect sense. Um, Russia being a bro, grabbing Sweden for himself. Um, yeah. So, that's 1914. Getting closer. Getting closer to maybe grabbing something from Germany here, but failed this year, unfortunate. Another army, because we got to keep trying. Russia's back up to four. Congrats. Uh, Turkey's nearly dead. There's chaos over here, because Germany's no longer attacking France. Not sure if France understands what's happening, because France's still, like, attacking Brest and stuff. It's... Whatever. Um, moving my armies up to Prussia because I gotta get that angle on Berlin, Munich. Um, going to grab.
grab Sebastopol and try to move up in the Mediterranean. This move here, Gulf of Leona Western Med, will force Germany, the German fleet here, to retreat to Spain. I think this next attack will destroy this fleet in North Africa. That's good. Rather see French fleets than German fleets because German fleets are competent. Uh, Sebastopol is mine. I attacked Warsaw. Why did I attack Warsaw? I don't know. I should have attacked Berlin. Maybe I wasn't confident that Russia wouldn't screw me from behind. Did he do something here? Yeah, Russia in the spring supported Munich to Silesia because, I don't know, he decided at this point he wanted to fight for a draw or something as opposed to helping me solo. So, yeah, I attacked Warsaw. Yeah, but why? Why would I do that? Because Russia's got three support, and what else is it going to do? Why would he not do that? So why would I not attack Berlin, and it literally would have worked here? Maybe I figured it was too obvious? No, well, I mean, I had a guess here. Why did I not take the guess? Silesia, Bohemia, Tyrolia against Munich. He's got three functionally to work with, because, you know, one of those is being hit by Berlin. And then these two hit Berlin. So he's got, got four in total. Yeah, I can put th three on this or two on this, and he can put two on this or three on this. Kiel has to choose, I think, right? That's what makes sense. I don't know. In any case, I didn't go for it, which was definitely a mistake. Um, yeah, but, okay, so that's fall 1915. Let's see. So, Turkey is dead. Rip. GG. Another army. France builds a fleet in the right place. Maybe I was thinking, I don't know, I don't know what I was thinking. But in this case, I try, I go for it. Yeah, because Burgundy needs to be supporting Germany here for this to be stable, I think, right? Because I have three here, and it needs one, two, three. These three need to be working together on Munich, and these two work together on Berlin. But France is incompetent, so... Eventually, I'll keep guessing, and eventually I'll guess right. That's how this works, unless France figures out that Burgundy needs to support Munich. So here I guess two, two here, two here. He does two here, two here, instead of three here and nothing here. So I guess wrong, um, but that's not a mistake. It's just a wrong guess. Though I'm pushing up in the Western Med. This German fleet is dead good. French fleets, I like those more. Pushing up again, trying to push up against Russia, but failing. Uh, let's see, what do I choose to do in the fall? In the fall, I think I go for, yeah, in the fall, I go for the guaranteed attack on Warsaw. Sebastopol cuts Moscow, Prussia cuts Livonian. Uh, so the only defense is like Berlin supporting Warsaw to Silesia, which is not going to happen, so... I go for that, thinking that I can always just come back and... T oh, yeah, but I'm up against the clock because here's how this gets fixed. I mean, Germany does not necessarily need Burgundy to support Munich. Kiel and Ruhr can support Munich, and that's fine, so long as this fleet in North Sea gets into Baltic, and then Baltic replaces Kiel as the defender of Berlin. So... I guess it is a mistake. I'm, mis I'm making mistakes here, and... Yeah, I'm going after Russia. Though, I mean, it is a variable that's annoying because it can screw with me and mess me up, even, like, you know. Because so if I... If, what did I do? The Well, I guess this previous turn I moved Prussia to Berlin. Um, so, but theoretically, you know, if I was using Prussia to, to support Silesia to Berlin, then this fucks that up. I can potentially even lose this army if, like, an attack is made on it, like Warsaw to Prussia, supported by Livonia. I don't want this army to be destroyed, so it's a risk, but, yeah. 
But I'm advancing in the Western Med, and something will crack, right? It's got a... But I got Warsaw. Um, yeah, so the switch situation down here now... I have this, right? Isn't this work? Or is this still... All right. Gascony covers Marseille, and that's good. So these two combine against Spain. Gascony has to guess whether Gascony in this position has to guess on Marseille or Spain. It's a 50-50. And it has to do that in combination with Marseille or Mid-Atlantic on Spain. Right. Okay, so let's see what happens. Okay, yeah. Well, yeah. Western Med into Spain. So this should be good, right? So now I have one, two, three adjacent to Spain. Um, he has one, two, three, four. He could probably still win this, right? There's another guess involved. I'll go. Back. I'll look at it in a sec. Um, yeah. More guesswork against Germany. This is my last opportunity because Denmark is moving to Baltic. I guess this time three on Munich, and he puts three on Munich. So my last guess against Germany fails. But this attack on Moscow is guaranteed because Prussia, Livonia, Warsaw, Ukraine, plus Sev is three against one, two. So I have that. That's guaranteed. So I just need to ensure, in this turn, the fall of 1917, that I successfully managed to gain Spain or Marseille or something down here. So what's the guaranteed move? Let's try to find it. How about Spain and Marseille, supported by Gulf of Lyon and Piedmont? One, two, I think, I think, I think I remember that there wasn't one. It's just, I gotta guess. And, you know, France sucks, so you can do that. So, Spain and Marseille, one. Gulf of Lyon, Piedmont, three. He needs to do Burgundy, Gascony, defend. Or, like, Marseille, two. Spain, supported by Gascony, Portugal, and mid. If he did that, then I'm forced out. What's he going to do? So, Marseille to Spain, supported by Mid-Atlantic, Gascony, and Portugal is a f strength of four. Nor okay, North Africa goes to mid. That's obvious. Fuck it, let's just see what I did. Yeah. Okay, cool. So I did, yeah. So I did Spain, Gulf of Lyon, Piedmont to Marseille. I guess that does work, doesn't it? I guess what would work against it? What would work against it would be, have to be, Gascony and Burgundy support Marseille to hold. And Marseille would then have to support anything. Portugal to mid, or mid would work, even if it was just one. Marseille supports Portugal or mid into Spain. That works. Am I done then? Probably. That's probably it. I probably can't gain it. Because... Because Western Med is not getting into mid-Atlantic. Yeah. All of this German shit is static. I grab Moscow. So that's that's the 17 minus this stuff. So this is all guaranteed. And I can't grab any of the German stuff. So it all comes down to this guess, I guess. Which I guess correctly. So. Let's go! 18. Alright, so I won that. Um... I think that was my first gunboat win as Italy, actually. Which is cool. 
Uh, yeah, so shout out to England and Germany for, and Austria, I'll say Austria too, and Turkey, and Russia, and France, screw it. They all played, some played better than others, but, uh, it was a really fun game, especially the, the amount of times I, like, lost guesses, like, what, three times to Turkey, a bunch of times to Germany, um, including some potential mistakes, but even when I was not making mistakes, I was guessing correctly, and Germany kept beating me. So yeah, I mean, that was hard fought, and if it wasn't for, well, I don't know. I don't know what, I don't want to analyze all the stuff France could have done down here. Like, it's certainly, e like, doable. I'm sure they could have constructed this stalemate line. Um... in time to stop me over here. They had a bunch of years to do it. Though in a gunboat game, even if, like, say, at this moment where France is AFK, someone replaced him, combined with, like, the situation that has already developed between Germany and France, like, the hostility there, and just, like, the who gets what, blah, 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 it might still be very difficult to form a stalemate line. To be honest, I haven't had to do that all that much in Gunboat, so I don't know how difficult it would be. They would both have to, like, you know, know what the stalemate line is. So, it would have been difficult to stop it, and they very nearly did it, so props to them for that. Um, but yeah, that was a fun game, especially, like, the interesting tactics against Austria. Uh, after that, kind of, you know, becomes a usual snowball and just kind of end game tactics. It's not really much, um, you know, gaming the other players as much anymore. It's just kind of like doing it. But up to that point, up until like, I don't know what year, 1909 or so. Yeah. Like up, up until now, up until this point, I thought it was pretty interesting. So, yeah, that's my game. Cool. Bye. If you watch the whole thing, holy fuck, you're fucking cool or something. Bye. Oh, also let me know if you want me to keep doing these, I guess. Comment if you got this far. Um, there's one gunboat game I played as England uh, recently, which I thought was pretty freaking awesome because I got invaded by both France and Germany and uh, survived, so... I might post that at some point within a decade, but yeah, anyway, later.